Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, what's How going on? How, how are things? Always good to see you, man. Always good to see you, too, my friend. How's that attending lifestyle, man? Oh, man, it's great. And, you know, it's, it's way better than being a fellow, for yeah. sure. But it comes <laughs> with its own trials and tribulations. Yeah. You know, um, how are things at Soccer Car? They're good, man. Since I've been back to Canada two years ago, it's been a tremendous ride. And it's just, I feel we, we gain so many skills and knowledge during our training. And it's just so fun to be able to, like, you know, applicate it to real life patient and just take better, better care of people. So, I mean, I mean, I gotta say, you know, now that I'm at Mass General, uh, I find that, you know, the transition to, from fellow to faculty is somewhat, uh, somewhat interesting. Um, you know, I had an idea of what it would really entail, but, you know, when you actually become an attending, um, when the onus is on you, yeah. you know, you're sometimes you're sweating bullets, you know, there are times when, before big cases, and you and I are chip operators, so, yeah. you know, we take on some of the more complex cases, and so, the night before, you don't sleep as well, oh, yeah. you're obviously going over your plan A, B, C, and D, and you're being very meticulous, and when you're a fellow, you sort of don't understand when the onus is really on you, yeah. you know, you go in, you do the case, and you learn to the best of your ability, and obviously, you're invested in the care of the patient, but until the buck stops with you, yeah. you know, it's a whole new ball game. It's not your name at the end of yeah, that exactly, paper, so right? that's the big difference. Yeah. I remember my first STEMI call alone at 3 a.m. Yeah. I mean, my first reflex was just, just to turn around and try to look for the attending, right? Yeah. And then when you realize, like, you're alone you're and everybody's looking at you're you, right. then reality kicks in. Yeah. I don't know how it is for you, but yeah. since I've been back, I mean, I've come back to a beautiful hospital, Sakeka Hospital, where everybody's very supportive of me. Yeah. They're not afraid of me, even though I went to acquire an advanced skill sets in coronary care, and yeah. actually they were looking forward for me returning so I could share my knowledge with them and we could do cases together. And these guys, these older guys, I mean, they're gonna be my mentors for life. Yeah. And whenever you know trouble hits in right. the cat lab, I mean, they're always there, you have to surround yourself with people right. who believe in you and not afraid of you. Right, and, uh, and so, like, so that's one of the big biggest things that I was worried about, you know, when you start off and you're coming into a new environment, particularly if you hadn't trained there, and then, you know, you're, you and I come up with a, a different type of skill set than a lot of other coronary operators. And so how do you integrate yourself to the pre-existing sort of ecosystem there? Yeah. And that's something that I was concerned about. And uh, I got to say, I, my experience has been very similar. You know, I think I was op uh, embraced with open arms. They really made sure that I was part of the team. And I think it helps everyone um, when that's the case. Case. And, you know, unfortunately, there's some colleagues that don't have that sort of experience. Yeah. Um, but I think you and I lucked out big time. And I think that, uh, you know, you and I have the pleasure. And I met your colleagues as well. Yeah. You've met a lot of my colleagues as well. So, uh, you know, I think that uh, having a system where they really take care of you and want you to grow and develop and can actually uh, nourish that development, I think, is huge. So yeah, I and, you know, especially fantastic. when you're doing these complex things, too, when you start, yeah. like, I mean, everybody's looking at you, right? Right. They want to know, is he going to get complications? Right. You yeah. know, you got that first year where all, our, all eyes are on you. Right. So I remember being very selective of the type of cases I would choose to do. I would review all the indications. I would see the patients myself. I really didn't want to have any major complications in my first few months because yeah. I knew that everybody was looking like, what is this chip thing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, this was yeah. fairly new when yeah. I was there. I was the only the second yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, Sanja Kara, our good friend, was right. the first one. So. I mean, you really have to be careful. Now I'm very happy to see how many CHIP fellows and advanced coronary care fellows have been coming out in the programs. And it's just been a, what a ride. Yeah, and the one thing is when you and I started doing this, there were very few CHIP programs. Even the concept of CHIP really didn't exist. Yeah. And now you see that it's sort of taken a life of its own. Now it's become a standard uh, pathway for interventional training. And so I think that's been terrific as well. Yeah. And so going back to what you said about what to do when it comes to doing these complex cases and not having complications, particularly when you're starting off improving yourself, um, you know, piece of advice I was given to uh, me by one of our mentors, Jeff Moses, was don't do a left main in your first 50 cases. But if you're a chip operator, you don't have that option. You gotta actually get in there and start doing things. So I think some of the things that helped me was one, uh, selecting cases that you know may be difficult for a lot of other operators, but with our techniques and our training may not be as complex for us. Um, so cherry picking them at the beginning I think was important. And then the second thing is also uh, working with some of your older colleagues that are a little bit more experienced and utilizing them and leveraging them to make sure that you're 
outcomes are great. And also sometimes just running the case beforehand and talking to them and then going through um, your plan for attacking um, uh, the lesion, yeah, I think so helps a lot too. Yeah, and you know, having the connection with our former mentors too, I don't know how many times I called Dimitri uh, or Jeff or Ajay or all the people who trained us. I mean, yeah. they're always available for us. They support us. They keep us active in the research community, in these conferences. So. It's been a really cool ride and it's good to see that uh, Canada and the United States are united in chip uh, <laughs> offering skills, man. It's always good to see you, Darsh. Always a pleasure, my friend. Always a pleasure. Yeah. All right, take care. All right.